Okay, um, let's do the, the demo now. This is HTZ Warfare. So first I'm going to explain the setup that we have here. Layers. We have the digital elevation model. And this is something you must use if you want to simulate or predict the communication between individual nodes correctly. We have the clutter. The clutter allowing you to model the urban or suburban or rural environment. Also allowing you to model the trees or vegetations, which can impact signal propagation. The image is just another layer allowing you to visualize where the locations of the nodes are. We also have pre-configured a, a propagation model, a prediction engine, in order to predict the signal, signal losses or the, the signal level between um, any two nodes. So here we're using Longley Rice propagation model, which is the NTIA point-to-point -point implementation. We set up a confidence level of 95% and a reliability of 70%. And we're assuming here we have average ground uh, type. So this propagation model would take care of uh, signal propagation prediction from one point to the other. And with the help of the digital terrain model and the clutter, the, the, the um, simulation or the uh, prediction would be more accurate. So to show you how this um, um, is playing up all together, you can run a signal um, prediction from that point to that point here. And you can see here we have the digital terrain model and the clutter. And this is the, the green, the green light is the signal propagation from that site to that site. So you can see how the signal is is behaving in response to the to the, to the digital terrain um, around it. Also, quickly show you the the setup uh, for the parameters here. We have uh, this is a mission unit, so we have ten watt transmitter. This is um, an omni antenna two point one, one sixty megahertz, five meter antenna height, and we're looking at neg hundred dBm sensitivity. We're not going to talk about all these parameters. So briefly, here we have CC. So this one, the green, the green stations, are CC, which means command control or command communication. And then we have the red, the red icons. Um, these are the mission units. So the mission units need to talk to each other, and at the same time, they need to find a way to talk back to the command control. And this is what I'm going to simulate um, in that first part of the webinar. I also modeled a vector layer for the um, for the uh, roads with a buffer of 50 or 100 meter from the roads. So let me show you. Um, use. So you can see this um, pink, this pink. Um, um, uh, the roads here. So, the, the, so this is this is buffered from the road center line, 100 meter each way. So effectively, this is my um, these are my ideal locations to deploy range extenders. So this is going to be used later on when searching for range extender. So first thing first, um, I'm going to show you how the mesh will be formed using this um, um, this setup. Multi point servers. Connect all servers based on signal level, max distance 10 kilometers. That's it. Here you go. This is a quick report, and this is the formation of the um, of the mesh network or the manet. So you can see this network here is isolated, but it is interconnected. This network here is also isolated from the others but it is well connected as well. This machine unit here is isolated completely, has no one else to talk to. And now this one here is another another one, same story. So you can see the command control is in, in the middle. This one has a command control. This one has no command control.
Now one can easily um, set the command control here as a reference and then analyze the shortest path from any mission unit. So you can select any mission unit and you go select and you ask for shortest path. So this is based on a minimum number of hops. You can choose the, sh the, the shortest path based on visibility or you could use the shortest path uh, based on the field strengths. Uh, above threshold. Let me use the links because I already have the links. Here we go. So now the tool established the, the, the shortest path from that mission unit to that gateway. You can choose different point and repeat the process. There you go. Now if you want to uh, find, if you want to interconnect these different um, um, uh, managed networks or clusters if you want to connect them all together we have existing function in the software to do that first you need to make sure you have coverage computed so you really have coverage calculated from the software second you need to use the vector polygon use vector polygon and then go with search nodes So you can specify the parameters of the node you want to use. So I'm going to use this, um, this template. You could use the uh, fast mode or you could use the slow mode, which is but more optimum, more accurate. I'm going to use fast mode for now. Create the links, no need. I already have the links created max distance 10 kilometers and now hit OK. So now the software is auto deploying range extenders in strategic locations within the polygon. So within within the, the, the roads uh, with a buffer of 50 or 100 meter from the road. Done. So here you go. You've got here the, the gray color. So the gray color are the range extenders, and you can see they are implemented in in the in the um, in the road buffer. So this one here, it's interconnecting one, two, three isolated clusters. Just one node is bridging these three, and here we've got one more also bridging these two clusters. Now you can establish a bridge with more interconnections, but you have to use the optimum method. So this is how easy it is to, to plan range extenders